Well, by profession, I'm a pastry person. I went to the Culinary Institute of America and I worked in restaurants and I wanted to be in a place where my children would ha be able to see me anytime they wanted to instead of, you know, coming into a restaurant. Um, and I wanted to have some control over my, over my fate. Being in charge is a good thing. And that was a, the big reason that I made the change. That and really wanting to express myself with, um, with food and my ideas. When I was a kid, and I lived near here in Arlington, but not in Alexandria, um, this was a railroad town. Delray um, was a town where the railroad workers lived, so it was a very modest town with lots of you know, cute little houses that the railroad workers worked in. And um, when I was a kid, the largest railroad switching um, yard east of Chicago was just, just right over a few miles from here, right off of Del Rey, and at night you they would switch trains all night long, and that you could hear them squeal and then crash into each other, coupling and uncoupling, you might say, all night long, and it was um, it was a very soothing sound to fall asleep to. I found it. It was that soothing kind of like the falling asleep to baseball on the radio sound. And I do miss it. And it, it makes me sad when I run into people who don't realize that that shopping area over there was a big train yard. When I was a kid, I used to come to this very store and it was a late, an old school ladies clothing shop called the Scott Shop. And um, we had four daughters in our family, and my mother sewed most of our clothes, but that was a lot of buttonholes for blouses. And so it, we were allowed to come here sometimes and buy blouses, and it was really, it was a big, exciting deal. And I remember um, um, coming here, and, and it, was, it was kind of a big deal for us to come here. Um, so I feel like I'm the keeper of this spot because I remember the Scott Shop. And so um, very few people are, who come in remember the Scott Shop, but I'm, I, I feel a little bit okay about having this location since I remember what it used to be back in the mm, 60s. I think they closed in the 70s perhaps. Mm -hmm. Here at the Dairy Godmother, um, I'm a big dog fan. I have dogs myself, and I knew I was concerned that people were going to give them their frozen custard, and that might not be the best thing for dogs. So we started making right away when we opened um, a frozen dog treat that would be a better, better digested by by dogs, and that became a really important part of what we um, of what we do here because people can sit outside with their dog and they can um, share something together. A lot of people walk their dogs down here and that way they can each get a frozen treat and sit outside and eat it and the dog owners talk to each other and the little children come around. Um, I am, um, I'm, my children went to T.C. Williams, which is Alexandria's only public high school. It was a great experience and I became a huge, um, I'm gonna say supporter and lover of the football team and the marching band, both of which my children were in. And I still go to the T.C. Williams football games and I still support the band and the football team. And the coach comes in to say hi to me and um, it makes it a very um, homey and comfortable place to have a lot of connections in that way. Do 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 Dear, that's that's crazy. I'm just gonna go ahead and say it. Cone. 
sure. It's gonna be great B-roll though. Can I get some Bevnaps, Gilma, please? Chocolate cone. There you go. What, could, what else for you? Who has not ordered yet? You have, guys? Sure. And what else, guys? Your maple walnut. Okay, so you can't, you can only have one flavor in a kid size cone vanilla or chocolate? Or maple walnut, or yeah. <laughs> Ice cream doesn't have to have any egg in it, but if you designate a certain amount of egg in it, which actually anything that's called custard implies that there's egg in it, like cooked custard, custard filling. That word, when you hear that word custard, that's an implication that there's egg in your product in a good way, right? So frozen custard has those specifications. Ice cream has a specification where it's 10% butter fat. It can have eggs in it, but it doesn't have to, right? And even sherbet has, has specifications. Um, low fat, I think they used to call it ice milk. Gilma's making cookies, and we're gonna make the cookies into frozen custard sandwiches. So those are oatmeal cookies. She'll be putting the cinnamon oatmeal cookie custard in between the sandwiches, and we'll serve them tomorrow. Right, Gilma? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Here's the oven. I'm going to take these out. These are probably ready, Gilma. I know you're doing something else. This is going to be a tr what we call the treat of the day, which is um, strawberry rhubarb. In this case, it's going to be strawberry rhubarb cobbler. So we gave that a little bit of a head start before we put the cobbler topping on it. We make treats that are delicious with frozen custard. We don't, you know, anything that's good with custard on it will, will, might become a treat of the day. Sticky toffee pudding, crisps, cobblers, old fashioned chocolate pudding cake like my mom used to make, um, strawberry shortcake, there you go, from the peanut gallery, strawberry shortcake. Um, it's Monday, so we only have a couple, but on the weekend we have more like, you know, four or five because it's a lot busier on, for us on the weekend here.